Hi, welcome to Sask Moto. Purchased this crash guard on Amazon. It was $219 and it had a 6% coupon and I received it in about three days. The time took over four hours. Uh, there were some issues, not all the parts were listed. There was no detailed instructions and there was some other things that were an issue. Right here are the parts. They came packaged very nicely in bubble wrap. There's the lower and upper parts, which consist of two parts each. And here's all of the wrapping on it. So they were wrapped really good. Here are the parts. These are the end caps for the bars, the bolts for the engine, and these are the bolts to attach the upper, upper and lower arms, right side and left side bolts. This part I didn't need. And this is the adapter to connect the lower bars together. Here's those detailed instructions. Well, they weren't very detailed. Um, they had pictures of where the part went, but it didn't tell you how to take off the part or install the part. Uh, it did give you, you know, the parts that are needed. However, um, it was difficult to sort those out first. So I would recommend do that first. Sort out all the parts and see that you have everything. And you can look at the diagrams and then see how many parts there were. What was missing were um, additional washers. And, uh, you know, I looked through the package, couldn't find them, but there was about three or four washers that were missing. And here are all the tools that you need. I used uh, both the socket and T-handles. Um, there's also a 12 millimeter socket that you need to take off the uh, engine guard. And you'll see this part here is where you take off the engine guard. There's four bolts. They're very simple. They're not tight at all. Uh, two on each side. One in the front and one in the back. So go ahead and start by removing the skip plate. Make sure you put all four of the nuts inside the skid plate when you take it off there or you don't lose it. Set that aside. Okay, what I like to do, what I like to do is dry fit all the pieces just to make sure that I know where they're going to go and how they're going to fit. One of the things I first noticed on this is the bars are kind of long. Um, I have 12, size 12 boots, and with boots on them, I was afraid that they would uh, interfere with this bar. So what I ended up doing was cutting this bar uh, about two inches smaller so that it wouldn't be an issue. And this is what it looks like with the cap installed on it. And later in the video, I actually show Now the gap is more so I don't think it'll matter with my boots on. So in the diagram it tells you to put the lower bolts on first. These bolts are the M8 by 35 bolts. You need a washer and a spacer to put those in. I recommend hand tightening them first to make sure that you're not going to strip the threads. This is actually on the bottom of the engine case, so you want to ensure that you don't strip the threads and just hand tighten them down first. Here I'm putting the front ones in, and again, just hand tightening them in so I ensure that I don't strip the threads on the engine block. One thing to note is that you want to keep everything loose until all the contact points are bolted in. 
because you might have to wiggle something around. This is a big washer for the engine block. Notice it's a flat head. You'll have to use this one in order to fit it behind the radiator pipe. This is one of the difficult parts of the install, is having to slide that bolt in there. And what I did was basically uh, pinch that radiator hose. What I was planning on doing was actually removing the radiator hose, but I didn't want to lose all the coolant and have to do all that stuff. So there's no pressure in the hose. It's uh, you know, something that you can squeeze and fit that bolt in there. And here you see me just tightening it down. Then you want to tighten the lower bolts on it after you finish tightening the top one. It's really sturdy once the bolts are in. So here I am tightening the back one, obviously. And here's where the T-handle comes into play. Because sometimes you can't reach the bolts. So just know on the front one, on this side, you have to use the T-handle. Okay, again, uh, dry fitting the other side. And notice how close the shifter is to this side. So again, I'm gonna cut this side down just to make sure it doesn't get in the way. That's how close it is. On this side, I actually cut off probably uh, an inch, inch and a quarter. And I'm using a mini uh, sawzall with a metal blade, metal cutter blade, I should say. I tape the side of it with some blue tape just to ensure that it doesn't peel all of the paint off. The whole process probably took about 10 minutes, so you have to go really slow on this just to make sure you get a straight cut. Then what I do is take a file and file it down a little bit, get off all of the rough edges. And you'll be able to see from the cut that I didn't mess up any of the integrity of the weld. I didn't even go close to weld. It was just the end. It was a piece that really wasn't needed on there, so I was okay with cutting it off. Here's the end cap. I have a rubber mallet that I just hit it in. So this is an eight millimeter hex that you take that engine bolt off. They're fairly simple. I was nervous about it because I thought they would be torqued down a lot, but they, they weren't. You want to make sure that you keep the washer because you'll have to reuse that washer. You won't reuse the bolt, but the washers. That's what the other side of the bottom bracket looks like. And then you're going to take the adapter and put it in one side and then slide it into the other side. This is what that's for. Okay, then I will put the bolts, the lower bolts 
it's in just to hold it in place it's better to put the back one in first because then you'll won't have to worry about it moving or anything like that and again all of these parts need spacers this one was different it was a m6 by 25 in the back which requires a five millimeter hex engine bolt that I'm putting in right now is, requires the big spacer and it is an eight millimeter hex that you need to put this in. Again just tightening it down. I threaded it first by hand just to make sure I didn't strip it. Then I go ahead and tighten all of the bolts again because they're loose right now. On this side, you have to use the T-handle hex on both the front and the back, so you won't be able to use a socket on the side. done with the lower side. Now you're going to attach the bar to the lower piece. This is a M10 by 20 with a lock bolt and a washer. And you're going to just bolt those together. Again, make sure you keep them loose because you have to make adjustments to it. Again, I'm just dry fitting to make sure I understand where the bars are going. Um, I look at all the, the screws and bolts and know which ones to take out. Here I'm removing the horn for some reason, I don't know. I didn't have to, uh, I just did. And here's where the struggle begins because they didn't supply any nuts or bolts for this. You're supposed to use the ones that are existing, but the existing ones are so short that they won't fit. So it, I had a delay in this process. I'd go to the hardware store and pick up these additional bolts and spacers or some washers to actually fit. Make sure you get the spacers, those, those really help out. Here I am attaching the left side first, just getting that going. It's not tightened all the way again, just partial. You can see the spacer right above. It's that silver piece right there. And tightening up, obviously, the right side. something it was a little over 200 bucks and uh, looks pretty good tell me what you think in the comments